Hi students, long time no see. We are back on our channel today with a grammar practice, um, a difficult grammar practice, but something we can definitely understand. And this is the practice with who and whom. We will also be practicing with whose and who, apostrophe s, whose, but those will be in a second piece of this small lesson, a second video of this small lesson. So let's jump right into this difficult piece. Get yourself some coffee, get some chocolate to keep your brain fresh, and we will work through this difficulty together. Who, whom, whose, and whose. These are the four pieces we will review in these two videos. Often when we see these words, we start to feel like this baby, our hair coming out to the sides, our, our brain mixing and spinning, and we are very confused. Many times students will ask me, is this a singular word or plural word? Is this informal? Is this formal? For example, I say who to my friend, but I say whom about my boss. And it's none, none of these pieces. This is not singular or plural. This is not formal or informal. Today, when we talk about who and whom, we are talking about the position of the word in the sentence. We are talking about the job, the function of the word in the sentence. Who is doing the job of subject and whom is doing the job of object. For example, in this sentence, Jules kicked the goalie. We know that kicked is the verb. This is the action. This is what Jules is doing. We know that Jules is a noun. And we know that goalie is a noun as well. Subject is who makes the action. Action of kick. Who makes the kick? Jules. Jules is subject. Object gets the action, receives the action. Who gets the kick? Who receives the kick? Goalie. This is object. Again, subject who does the action, who does the kick, Jules, object, who gets the action, who gets the kick, the goalie. Let's think about this then for who and whom. Jules kicked the goalie. If I take away the word Jules, I take away the subject, I will put in the word who. Who kicked the goalie? If I take away object, goalie, then I need to put in the word whom. Whom did Jules kick? Whom did Jules kick? Let's look at another sentence. The teacher called the students. Again, verb called. Who did the call? The teacher. Subject. Who got the call? Students. Object. The teacher called the students. Take away the word teacher. We need to use the subject who. Who called the students? Take away the word students. We need to use 
whom. Whom did, whom did the teacher call? Last practice. Amy was talking to Lisa. Action verb was talking. Who does the talking? Who did the talking? Amy? Subject. Who received, who got the talking? Lisa? Object. Amy was talking to Lisa. Again, take away subject, Amy, and we say who. Who was talking to Lisa? Take away object, Lisa, and we say whom. Whom did Amy talk to? Now this sentence, whom did Amy talk to? This is an argument in grammar. Many people in grammar will say you cannot put the word to you cannot put preposition at the end of the sentence. And so then we will see this. To whom? To whom did Amy talk? However, most people in their daily life are not using this grammar correctly. And even this word of whom, most people who learn English from baby Growing up speaking English, they are not using who and whom correctly. And they are saying, who did Amy talk to? Instead of whom did Amy talk to? We need to be able to see and hear the word whom, to read it in a newspaper, in a journal, to recognize it, and to know this is not singular plural. This is not formal informal. This is about position in the sentence, subject, object. Amy was talking to Lisa. Take away Amy. We put who. Who was talking to Lisa? Take away Lisa. We put whom. Whom did Amy talk to? That's it for part one of who, whom, whose, and whose. As always, post any questions in the comments underneath of this video. Put in some sentences that you want to practice this difference between who and whom. Leave me any questions that you have. Until next time, students. Bye.